Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted all the terrain for my upcoming tournament, including this giant rogue idol. And this guy is going to serve as one of the theme tables, and each table is going to have its own narrative and theme going on. So super excited, really happy how it turned out. So I'll show you the process on how I painted this, and all the other parts of the terrain sets that I've been building. And if you saw the video I put up a couple of days ago, you'd have seen how I assembled it all. So let's get started with the painting. And here we are at this stage after I painted it all with the black garage floor paint. Now it's time to add some colour with some various paints from poster paints, acrylics, little tester pots and a household one coat emulsion. And I'm not messing around, I've got this massive brush to help me do the job. So let's start off with the butt cave and this is going to be part of the Rogue Idol set. So here you can see it's all painted up. There are some gaps where you can see some of the paint. But to be fair, you're not really going to notice those. But I'm going to fill them up with flocking and rocks and everything like that later on. So once I've painted it, I'll show you how I just added some extra details and features. But painting first, I've got this plastic lid off some kind of packaging. I've got some cream Johnston's household paint here. And that's going to be the base of it. Then I'm just going to mix in some of this Hobby World black poster paint. And then use this massive brush to do the dry brushing. So I'll add the paint in first, get this cream colour in there, and then I'll mix that together with the black paint. These mix together really well. I mean, I'm just using what I've got to hand, what I've got left over from other projects. So I would say to test it out before you put it on your model, if you're going to do anything like this. But I know these paints work from previous things I've done. So I get my brush, put some in there, and the tips of the bristles, much like you do with the smaller models and your smaller brushes, it's the same technique. Work it in and then get as much paint off the bristles as you can. And so I've loaded up the brush there and then I'm going to get started. I'm going to take my time at first, just go all around the model. It's almost like a dry brush stroke over brush here, but I'm trying to keep some of that black coming through in the recesses. That's all going to add to the finished effect. But just going over it, this big brush is making light work of this. I mean, I've done all the terrain you would have seen in the previous video in one day. So it doesn't take too long at all. And here you can see that that's half of it covered. So I've just done a comparison to give you an idea. The light's shining on it quite a lot, but um, yeah, I'm dulling it down with this and getting rid of that gloss that comes from the garage floor paint. But when some of it pokes through, it does actually have a nice effect. So I don't mind if I do miss any bits. And then I'm going to be in a bit rougher now as I'm more confident. I don't have as much paint on the brush, but I can try and catch those real sharp edges. So I'm really flicking that brush. And there you can see that's the whole Rogue Idol set, completely dry brushed now with the grey. I want to mix it up a little bit, so I'm going to add some Burnt Sienna. This is the acrylic paint, so just add a little blob of that in there. Get a smaller brush, this is a makeup brush, and then work some of that into the bristles. And again, we're going to dry brush this on, but I'm just going to pick out certain boulders, little parts of it, just to break up the monotony in the grey. It's going to be very subtle. You're not going to see an awful lot of this, but when the green goes on it later with the flocking and the different coloured pebbles, it'll be nice to have a little bit of a different background to show all that off. And there you can see, nice and subtle, and I've spaced it out so it looks as natural as possible and pleasing to the eye. Right, now we're on to more of these desert stacked rocks. So I'm going to take that burnt sienna again, but instead of using the brush, I'm going to use this old sponge. And I try and tear it at an angle, and that's going to help us later on, as you'll see. So I'll pop some of that into another plastic tub, get the tip of that sponge in there, and where the angle's gone, that's going to enable it to go in the little recesses a little bit better. So just tearing it at an angle really helps and then saves you a lot of time. So just plopping that on, and as I get going, I get more messy, I get quicker, but this is a messy process, and we're gonna dry brush it later on so you won't see just how messy it looks here. It, when it dries, the black will come through quite a lot, and it will show off really nicely. I did a similar effect on a previous video that I linked to at the end of this one. If you wanna see this particular process in detail, and there's the desert terrain pieces I made a long time ago on the shelf there. Let's do some brown now. I've got some burnt umber. I'm going to pop that in a little lid, just a plastic old lid. I keep all things like this from the trash and then that's going to really be coming handy for when you're doing projects like this. And I'm just going to use a little sponge instead of a brush, mainly because I don't have any little brushes. And so this is what I've got. So I'm just going to use it and then just work that in. Give it a nice coat all along the base and also around the rim. And we'll add some flocking later on to this brown floor. So at this stage, I've pretty much done all the base coats and base dry brushes 
for all of the terrain. And there's a lot going on here, volcanic, desert, we've got Stonehenge type things. We've got all sorts going on over here, more of the red volcanic rock stacks. They turned out really nice, I was really happy with those. But let's get back to this guy, and you can see now, I just wanna catch all the edges with another highlight. And so I'm gonna go with a nice light gray. And this time I don't want it too warm, so I'm gonna go with white first. Again, just some household paint. I couldn't get the lid off, so I had to punch a hole in it. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of the black paint to this as well, and then give it a really good mix. This is a much lighter grey and it's going to serve as the highlight. So again, work it into those bristles. Use the cardboard to get as much of the paint off as you can. Just be very careful at this stage. Here you can see the one on the right I've done. And now I'm going to do this one just so you can see the difference. But I'm being really careful. Just trying to catch those edges. I'm changing the angle of my brush this time instead of going all, all over it in a rough fashion. So I'm really trying to catch those edges and just get most of the paint onto those. And that's going to make it stand out. They can sometimes be a bit chalky, a bit powdery looking if you go too heavy at this stage. So just really take your time, especially when you've only just put the paint on the brush. And then I use that same grey to give a highlight to the red and black volcanic rocks. And I think that's really brought the texture out there really nicely. Also on the grey stone hinges. I'll use an orangey pink highlight on those stone stacks. But otherwise, we're pretty much done now, so it's time to start moving on and start adding some pebbles and flocks to our rogue idol. Now I've got all sorts of different coarse turfs, some I made myself, some I've bought, some really fine flocking, pebbles, some sticks that I dried out in the oven, and then my glue gun and the PVA as well. And then I'll be brushing this PVA on at the final stage. And this is what we're going for. Want to add some different grades of flocking to this. Want to add some colored pebbles and the sticks. And that's really going to give it this natural moorland look. First step of this process now is to add this hot glue and I'm going to dot around all the different piles of stones to make it look as natural as possible. I'm just sprinkling them on nice and random, all different sizes, and then some of that hot glue is going to shine through. So I pick some of the coarser tufts and then push those into place. And then finally, once I've got some big lumps in there, some of the coarse bits, I'll go for the really fine flocking and then that'll fill up all the gaps, stick to all the glue, hopefully hide it all. And then that's it. That's the process. And then once that's done, I just tap it off. I get a box later on to put it all in. But this is just a demo for you. And there you can see loads of texture just from this very simple process. Then what I'll do is I'll put the sticks on later because usually they would fall on top of rocks and things like that and then just stack them up add a bit of PVA glue that I've painted on, sprinkle some more of the different textures on, and that's gonna cover it up really well. And then I go over the whole model with a small paintbrush, paint PVA glue, and then sprinkle the different flockings on. And this is the final effect, that's all there is to it. I think you get a really nice finish from it, and it doesn't take too long either, even for big pieces like this. And one thing I might go back to do is just add some flowers and some of the different tufts that I've got. And I think that'd be really nice just to add another layer of texture, a few different colours in there, and I think that'd be really cool. So I might go back and do that. I might not, we'll wait and see, but I'm going to leave this overnight now to completely dry. And then what I'll be doing is taking photos of all the terrain sets and posting those on my Facebook page real soon as we get closer to the tournament I've got coming up on the 2nd of July. So look out for those photos there. But that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear what you think, so let me know in the comments down below. It's not long to go to the tournament now, super excited. We've got some great sponsors with some really cool things from mats through to terrain and all sorts going on. So I'll be sharing that with you over the next few days as well. So look out for that here on YouTube, but also on my Facebook page. Massive thank you to all the sponsors. Can't wait to share more about them with you here. But also a massive thank you to the sponsors of the channel this month for helping me keep going with these daily videos. I'm really excited to be working with these awesome companies and creators as well. And there's some links down below if you'd like to check them out. Support them and support me here on the channel too. Thanks again for watching. Like if you like it. Subscribe for more videos like this. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. I couldn't do this without you and I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks at the same time, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be awesome to see you there.